And I'll let you see where I came from. I wasn't born in this position. It just didn't happen this way. I had to work in here. But I've been scared like every one of you. I've sat out there just like every one of you. I've dreamed like every one of you. I've been at every level, every level that you're at. Every level. I don't care if you're making five hundred thousand dollars a year, a million dollars a year. I don't care if you're making fifty dollars a year. I have been at every single level in this country. But anyway, I started out teaching high school seventeen years ago. I met my teacher friend out there who told me he's been teaching a long, long time. And it's come full time. So this story is mainly for you also. But I taught out there for seventeen long years in a little town called Warner Robins, Georgia. It's about eighteen miles from Lake. And I was literally starting to death. See, I think it's a shame they don't pay school teachers more money for the great job they do in this great nation. That's a shame. Yeah. I, mean, I think that's the only bottom line on, on our country. I mean, I love this country with everything. If you cut my things, it runs red, white, and blue. Honestly, I mean, I love my I don't like politicians. I don't like any of them, most of them. I don't like them, but I love my country. But anyway, I wish school teachers paid more money, but I didn't. Now, let me tell you, after 17 long years, I was making $12,500 a year. Don't move from California, okay, to Georgia. All right, I'll tell you that now. Folks, that's before taxes. That's before state taxes, federal taxes, and dues, and you name it, and everything else they had out there. So anyway, you met me got a paycheck, I was paying home. I was literally starting to pay payment bills. And one day, one day, uh, a guy stood in the hallway. His name was Coach Summerall. I was over at the cafeteria. This is a true story. And over at the cafeteria, Coach Summerall stopped and said, Ronnie, what kind of life insurance do you have? Now, let me show you how brilliant I was about life insurance. How brilliant I was about financial services. I was just sitting day, folks. If I can do it, you can do it. And I said, Coach, I said, I've got, uh, I've got, uh, I've got, I've got 20000 He said, what kind is it? Not in the company. He said, well, what kind is it? I said, 20000 What kind is it? Not in the company again. Well, what kind is it? And I said, either I don't speak English, or you don't understand. I just told you what I made. And so he said, yeah, what, how much I've got? And so he said, oh, well, if I can cut your costs, if I can save you money, will you do business with me? I said, what? He says, I can take your policies, analyze it, bring it back, cut your costs, do a better job. Will you do business with me? And what am I supposed to say? No, I think I'll keep what I got, pay more and have less? <laughs> That's a loaded question. So guess what I did? I said, sure, if you can cut my cost, why not? So anyway, he took my policy, brought it back, cut my cost, and I bought it. Now that was the best program in all the world. Well, guess who sold my original program? My own brother. My brother sold me a whole lot. He did me in. I replaced his policy. Because let me tell you something, I'm not so stupid to say that I don't care who sold it to me. He cut my cost, take money, which he did, do a better job. I didn't care who sold it to me. So I bought the program and cut some wrong. And so then he said, uh, so, but he didn't try to hire me. Now, I think he did a great job for me over here, but he cost me a bundle of money. What if, what, just what if he gave me a job a long time ago? Imagine how big I'd be today. I'd be three times my size if I had that extra maybe eight months or a year. That would have happened. He didn't do it. But anyway, I went on. So I owned a policy. I thought everyone should have it. But one day, another guy ran my girl by my name of Becker Smith. And he came on in. And I taught Becker in school. Been on Becker all his life. Kept raising the kid and all that. He sat down with me, started going to this program. I said, wait a minute, Becker. I said, is that, is that, is that, is that A.O. Williams? I said, just wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Went in my bedroom, got my policy, brought it back and threw it on the sofa. And I said, see your Becker, on your own I love it. I wish you'd come sooner, because I would have bought it from you. Because I like you, but I didn't come sooner. I wish you'd come sooner, but you didn't. Audio of the product. I think everybody should have it. It is great. It is wonderful. I'm thrilled with it. I love you. Come to love. He said, well, uh, he said, well, but, but, but uh, since you love it so much, what about coming to work? And my reaction? I said, do it. What? <laughs> do it. What? He said, well, I'm doing it. I said, no way. I said, I don't mean to offend you, but I've got a good reputation. I'm not allowed to do that. I'm not going to be some dirty insurance salesman out there. That's the last one. I don't want to be that. has to be the pit. Nobody wants to be one of them. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but I'm not going to do it. He said, right. I said, no question to it. I'll give you names. I'll call it. I'm not going to do it. So he said, he said, but. I said, no question to it. Thank you for coming. He said, well, tell, 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 what you going to do? you got got another two months of summer. What are you going to do? I said, see, that's over. I'm going to lay right there. <laughs> I said, well, get up. I'm going to go to the base gym. I'm going to play squash. It's like racquetball. That's the book that tougher game than racquetball. I mean, on the, on the Nancy's play racquetball. The real men play squash, okay? <laughs> Back to my home 
they have a squash court. I built a squash court in my home. You know, I'm not dedicated to squash. Mm -hmm. My whole squash court. <laughs> come see it. Be with, be part, part, how many people have been in my home? Part of been in my home. You got to come back and see the squash court. Mm -hmm. I got a squash court. Mm -hmm. Come see that. Try to come back squash with me. I'll even pay that in, okay? <laughs> but uh, anyway, seriously. So, uh, so, uh, <coughs> well, I'm going to right there. But anyway, I, I said, Beverly, I'm not about to do that. I mean, I'll give you names, I'll call people, but Beverly, I'm just not going to do it. I'll play squash, come home, watch TV, wait for school, and wait, wait for school to start again. He said, but Ronnie, I said, no, he said, but don't you understand, in two months you can probably make an extra two or three thousand, four thousand dollars? Folks, honestly, I said, in the chair, my eyes got that big. I said, what? <laughs> what? He said, you make two or three thousand dollars probably. I said, in two months, Beverly, come on. He says, after, folks, when you come where I come from, when you can't pay your bills, when you go over here and you write a check on price and raise the bank on money, I've done that. When you go over here and pay Sears and write beans, dear beans, do the illness and go pay Sears. And then the next month you write the letter the other way. I've done that. I've known what it is to hurt. I've known what it is to do with that. I've known what it is to be poor. I really truly have. I've known the other end of the spectrum. I can tell you which one's better. I can assure you. I've known what it is to be rich. But I can tell you which is better. I mean, beyond that, there's another world. There is another world in beyond that one that you're going to strive for. I mean, you're not your grave, you're not dead. But anyway, I'll go back to my little story again. So I said, uh, I said, Beverly, I said, are you really serious? He said, yeah. I said, Beverly, I don't know anything about sales. I don't know anything about insurance. I don't know anything about investments. He said, well, can you pass the test? I said, I think so. I've given enough. I should be able to pass one. So I said, he said, I said I'll coach you. Help me pass the test. He said, you pass the test. I'll go with you. I'll do all the work, and I'll give you half the money. And I looked at him like, man, I'm just stupid. <laughs> man, he said, now wait a minute, Jeff, you're going to do what? I'll do all the work and give you half the money. Folks, what have I got to lose? Nothing. Zero to lose, right? Nothing to lose. That's a great line to use on someone out there when they're scared. Because so most people don't come to work because they're scared. They're afraid, they're afraid of rejection. They're afraid they're going to fail. They don't want to be a loser. They don't want to be publish as a loser. That's a wonderful line to use on someone. So he says, I'll go with you, but I won't have the money. I said, great. You got it. I said, how many times do you go with me? We're required to go at least three times. I said, Beth, I've been knowing you all my life. Go with me six times. He says, okay, I'll go with you six times. And I haven't got to learn anything, know anything, do anything. Got it. Just pass the task, you don't know how to work, you have the money. That's a gold mine. I said, nine times. He said, okay, I'll go with nine times. I said, man, this is great. Nine times you don't go with me all the way. I don't do anything. School start back, I'll take a bowl of money, don't do anything. It's wonderful life. So then he said, I said, Bedford, go with me 12 times. <laughs> True story, 12 times. I thought, man, he's already convinced to nine, right? I can't do it. He says, 12, as many as you want. I said, man, I got it made. I mean, I'll just sucker him in, I'll make my money, and I'll walk away and take half my money, and I'll be a happy puppy to have learned anything to drink. I guess it did. And that's where I got started. And I went out there, you can't do this, you can't do this, okay? But I went out there with the first time, and uh, I watched him observe it. He did a great job. That was great. I went out with him the second time. When he got to the end of the thing, and he did a great job. One of my best friends said over here, he said, that sounds real good. Let me think about it. And I said, think about what, Harry? I said, look here, stupid. Look what you got. <laughs> I didn't know that. I said, and so I said, look at you can't do that. I said, you got twenty thousand for the same dollar, gonna give you a hundred thousand for the same dollar? I said, wait a minute, Mary, look here, you understand darling, you're gonna get a hundred instead of twenty for the same dollar. She says, I hear that does sound a lot better than hundred is twenty. I said, sign here, Mary, he's dead anyway. Just sign here. My little chest was all poked out, and I felt so great about myself. I mean, I felt so good. And Beverly said, What did you do? I said, What do you mean, what did I do? He said, What did you do? I said, Nothing. He said, You're supposed to be observing. You can't call people stupid. You can't call people you can't do this is business world. You can't do that. You're not teaching school. I said, Bedford, I said, that's my best buddy. You ought to hear the names he calls me. We go fishing and hunting together. If I if I miss my shot, you ought to hear the names he calls me. And he says, but I said, no buts to it, Bedford. I said, one thing, Bedford. Who got him to sign tonight? Me or you? He said, well, I would have got it anyway. I said, Bedford, who got him to do it tonight? Me or you? He said, well, I guess you did. I said, that's right. So all the money is mine. Thank you.
time we have to observe. So I went to the third time, if a mouse should observe. Then after that I said, he said, what about tomorrow night? I said, what about tomorrow night? He said, what time do you want to go? I said, I'm going out at 7 o'clock. What are you doing? <laughs> I don't need you anymore. Go away. <laughs> That's why I came to work. Simple as that. Easy as that. So I didn't know anything about anything. But I just knew one thing. But I wanted to win. I was doing a great job. I was a crusader. And I walk in those homes there and I sit down with families. And honestly, if they didn't get mad, if they didn't pound the table, then I didn't win. See, so many times now, this day and time, we're not crusaders where we used to be. I want them mad. I want them angry. And you got to get back to that again. Had a man one time tell me, honest to the truth, if he puts his foot in my pocket again, I'll shoot him. <laughs> That's called crusade. Yeah. That's called winning. That's the kind of thing, folks. That locks them in. That's where the sales made. That's where the persistency is. That's where the best business is on the front end, not the back end. But I got to finish down the front end. That's why my, my persistency was great, wonderful because of that. But anyway, going on the whole story. So I know anything about it. But then I begin to go out there and hire some other hungry school teachers like myself. And I hired a Bob Collar, who today is the National Director of Savannah, Georgia. And I hired a Kip Ridley, who went on to, to, to this, this year to be paid probably $1.2 million or something like that this year. Now, do you think he doesn't love me? Let me tell you something. doesn't matter whether he does or not. His wife Carol does. I promise you that. <laughs> she loves me. One more I just go ding dong and ring that bell. Then I went out there and I hired some other great winners. Mike Sperry who worked the Sears and Roebuck, and the list goes on and on and on. Hired eight great winners. And from those eight great winners, folks, I built a company close to about 25, 30,000 people that stretches all of this great nation. Even into Hawaii, and Saipan, and Canada, and all over. Just by starting out with those eight winners like that. And that's what you can do. What I'm trying to tell you today is, you're going to talk about a lot of great things. But the most important thing you got to keep in the back of your mind is building. You've got to be a builder. You've got to be a recruiter. You've got to increase your numbers. I heard some things that people said at the table last night about that they get 10 people who are doing things you don't have to ever. And I listened to that last night, and I agree with some of that to, to a point. But wouldn't it be better if you had those 10 to 50, and those 50 to 100, and those 100 to 200? And someday you looked up one day, and Gary, instead of having maybe uh, 100 people in your base shop, you started, I, I admire you so much, went from 3 to 100 and some odd. To look up one day, a year from now, and you've got 10,000. Is that even better? Yes. That's a whole lot better. <laughs> well, that's not going to come from sales, that's going to come from recruiting. Right. And you've got to get back to think of recruiting. It's got to be a mentality, it's got to be a way of life. It's got to be so easy. To me, recruiting and prospecting is no more than brushing my teeth and going my hair. Honestly. It's just that easy. Now, did I start out that way? Well, I tell you a while ago, but I didn't know anything about anything. Did my hands sweat? My palms sweat? Was I scared to death? Did I make mistakes? I put my foot in my mouth? Absolutely. But it's like anything else you do in this world. The more you do of it, the more you do of it, the more you do of it, the better you get. And the more numbers you play, the more numbers you play, the more numbers you play, the better you're going to be a big winner.